We're not talking about punching a time clock and working nine to five. We're talking about working around the clock, rain or shine, hot or cold, because crops and animals won't wait. Jimmy knows all about it because he lives it. And Jimmy knows what you're going through because he goes through it too. He's here to talk about it. It's seed and feed, chemicals and compost, vaccinations and irrigation. It's time for Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Hey, good day to all you great stewards of the land. It is the day in Ag with Jimmy Clark, brought to you by the First National Bank and Trust of Sayre in Elk City, Oklahoma. Uh, what is today? Today is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. The day is Heyday Tuesdays, by the way, and brought to you by the Great Plains Bank. And what I'm looking, if you're looking to buy or sell hay, text it in to our Ag text line at 580 580- Two two five nine six nine seven. If you're wanting to sell, I need the type of hay, tested or untested, price per bale or ton, loading availability, your phone number, and where's the location at. Basically, what counting are you in? Anyway, uh, it's starting to build. Last week we had five uh, people text in hay for sale, so let's keep it going. Hay season, hay and season is. Here for some of us, but serious hay season's coming up. Or if you're wanting to buy some, or uh, text in what you're looking for, what type of hay, and phone number to get a hold of you, and basically where you're located also. And that'll be coming up in the last segment. Got Brandon Hickey will be on here in just a, a little bit. And today is the Stockman's Veterinarian Clinic Day. And we'll have more on them coming up later in the show. But I got a good story for you before we get to uh, what happened overnight in our big world of agriculture. So, two sisters, one brunette, one blonde, inherited the family ranch. Unfortunately, after a few years, they got into financial trouble. So, in order to keep the bank from repossessing the ranch, they needed to purchase a bull that they could breed their own stock upon leaving the brunette tells her sister when i get there if i decide to buy the bull i'll contact you to drive out and get me and haul the bull home the brunette arrives at the man's ranch inspects the bulls and decides she wants to buy it the man tells her that he will sell it for 599 dollars after paying him she drives to the nearest town to send her sister a telegram to tell her the news. She walks into the telegraph office and says, I want to send a telegraph telling her that I bought my sister, that I bought the bull and for our ranch. I need her to hitch the trailer up to our pickup truck and drive out here so we can haul it home. The telegraph operator says he'll be glad to help. Then he adds, it will be cost 99 cents a word. Well, after paying for the bull, the brunette realizes she'll only be able to send him, send her sister one word. So after a few minutes of thinking, she nods and says, I want you to send her the word comfortable. The op, uh, operator shakes his head. and How is she ever going to know that you want her to hitch the pick trailer to the pickup truck and drive out here to get you and the bull by just using the word comfortable? The brunette explains, my sister's blonde. The word is big. She'll read it very slowly. Come for the bull. (laughs) I thought that was pretty good myself. So anyway, all right, let's check out what's happening. Let's check out some temperatures real quick before I get, I got ahead of myself there. Right now it's 75 degrees at Beaver, 76 at Cheyenne, home of their secret weapon, 76 at Putnam, Cherokee, you're 79. 81 at Altus, out here in the panhandle of Texas. 73 degrees at Lipscomb. 79 at Dozer. 78 at Wellington. Childress, you're 79. And 81 degrees at Odell. All right, let's see what happened overnight in our big world of agriculture. Soybean and grain futures were higher in overnight trading on technical buying and concerns about weather in some growing areas globally. 
Investors went bargain hunting overnight after prices dropped four straight sessions. Speculators who had been short the market or had bet on lower prices likely bought back contracts and closed out some contracts. Weather outlooks are mixed as rain later this week may slow harvest down in the Midwest, which is well ahead of the averages for this time of the year, while newly planted winter wheat will benefit from the precipitation. I hope these Man, I hope the weather people are right on this one because, I mean, they're showing northwestern Oklahoma one to two inches, and it's like Roger Mills County over towards, what was that, Enid, down here in the middle third of the state at that angle, two to four inches of rain and four to six inches of rain in southeastern Oklahoma. So the whole state of Oklahoma needs rain, period, including the panhandles. I'm not... I know you guys are in decent shape, but I know there's got to be some dry spots up there. So hopefully it, it's good. Uh, the U.S. soybean harvest continues to move at a breakneck pace with 89% now in the bin, according to the Department of Agriculture. That's up from 81% a week earlier and ahead of the prior five-year average of 78%. The corn harvest was 81% finished versus 65% the week prior, and the average is 64% for this time of year. Winter wheat planting rolls on with 80% now on the ground, the agency said. That compares with 73% of the previous week, but is behind the prior five-year average of 84%. Soybean futures overnight for January delivery rose four and a half cents to nine dollars and ninety and a half cents a bushel overnight, and on the Chicago Board of Trade, that is, soy meal fell one dollar to three oh three eighty a short ton, and soy oil added 0.71 cents to forty three point four cents a pound. Corn futures added two and a quarter to four thirteen a bushel. Wheat futures for December delivery rose four and a half cents to five sixty three and a quarter a bushel, and Kansas City futures gained five cents to five sixty six and a half a bushel. Grain and soybean inspections for export were lower week to week, according to the USDA. Corn assessments in the seven days that ended on October twenty fourth were reported at eight hundred twenty three thousand metric tons. That's down from one million tons the previous week. That's still above the 540 this time last year, 540,000 tons that is. Wheat inspections totaled 248,000 tons. That's down from 268,000 tons assessed the week prior, but it's higher than 198,000 tons last year. Examination of soybeans for offshore delivery declined to 2.39 million tons from 2.55 million tons a week earlier. Last week's total was still up. From the 205 million, or I'm sorry, 2.05 million tons assessed the same week a year ago. Since the start of the marketing year on September 1st, the USDA has inspected 6.62 million metric tons of corn for overseas delivery, an increase from 4.98 million tons last year. Soybean assessments since the beginning of, of September stand at 10.4 million tons, up narrowly from. 10.2 million. Wheat inspections since the start of the grains marking year on June the 1st are now at 9.51 million tons versus the 7.12 million tons examined last year. Dry, windy weather. I just got a text from somebody right before the show said this wind's going to blow the rain right out of here. Maybe. But dry weather and intense winds are forecast for a large chunk of the Corn Belt and the Southern Plains, according to the National Weather Service maps. Red flag warnings have been issued for central Colorado into western Iowa. In south-central Nebraska and north-central Kansas, winds will be sustained at 20 to 30 with gusts up to 50. Back down here in Oklahoma, in the Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle, meanwhile, winds will today will gust up to 60 miles per hour and be sustained from 35 to 40 miles an hour. Just, it's here. Let's see here. Let me get right back over here on the mezzanine real quick and see something real quick. Uh, Where is it at? Why am I having a current map? There we go. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Huh. 
they changed something up today. Well, well, here we go. I found it. Nope, that's not it. Either. They changed something. What's wrong with these people? Anyway, I'll figure it out when I get back here in just a little bit. And then uh, let's go ahead and take a Stockman's Veterinary Clinic. Happy hour break. And when we come back, I'll see if I'll have Brandon on here. See if we can get a hold of him. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Hey, cotton farmers, are you walking in high cotton? It's easier than you think. Have your cotton gin fast and efficiently at Western Planters Cotton Gin in Hobart, Oklahoma. Bet you didn't know they have the largest gin in the state and the connections to get top dollar on your investment. They're located at the corner of Highway 9 and Highway 183, just north of Hobart. Be sure and check them out online. WesternPlantersCottonGin.com We do a ton of wholesale work with your mechanic shops, but it's also the DIY guy that has Saturday afternoon off. He comes in Saturday morning, picks up his stuff, and, and works on his pickup. It's a wide range of people. It can vary from the biggest shop in town to the smallest shop in town to your guy that works in his garage on the weekend. We try our best not to tell the customer no, but to find what they need. Napa Auto Parts of Elk City, 716 West 3rd. More parts for more cars. Is your cattle mineral investment being washed away? Weather can cause conventional mineral to absorb water and blow away. Simply put, your cows probably aren't eating it. That's why Purina created Wind and Rain Storm Mineral, a weatherized mineral that can stand up to the elements. Its larger particle size makes it harder to blow away and easier for water to pass through it. Keep money in your pocket. Contact Farmers Union Co-op of Elk City today. Briley Baca is an investment advisor representative of and advisory services offered through Royal Fund Management, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. He remembers his dad coming home from the rigs in the early 1980s with his coveralls covered in grease and oil. Then he followed his dad's footsteps into the oil field. He likes the work and appreciates what it's done for his family. But he likes something else a lot more. He and his wife have three grown kids who have kids of their own now. They love playing with those grandbabies. Soon, they'll see their grandkids all they want. Might even fix up the house and go on that Caribbean honeymoon they couldn't afford 35 years ago. When his family was young, he contacted some people who put a plan together for him. He and his wife sacrificed and worked the plan all these years. Their patience and persistence are about to pay off. Advanced Financial Strategies in Clinton, retirewithbaca.com, or 323-6800. All the work you're doing now should lead to something better someday. This is the Western Oklahoma Livestock Auction Market Report for Monday, October 28th. 1,675 head were sold. Six head of steers at 497 brought 265. Five at 531 brought 282. Seven at 569 brought 255. Three at 638 brought 219. Eight at 793 brought 247. 61 at 944 brought 231. Six head of heifers at 424 brought 280. Ten at 465 brought 230. Seven at 542 brought 241, 48 at 653 brought 245, 38 at 751 brought 231.50, 30 at 774 brought 231.50. Butcher cows were 20 to 145, butcher bulls were 93 to 156, bred cows were 1610 to 2175. Western Oklahoma Livestock Auction, exit 71, Clinton, Oklahoma, sell every Monday at 10 a.m. To consign, call Brandon Hickey, 580-497-6095. Now, Back to more of Today in Act with Jimmy Clark. All right, welcome back. Here's an ag weather update for you out here in the Texas Panhandle. Wellington, 79 degrees, humidity 50%, dew points 59. The winds are out of south at 26 with gusts up to 33, peak wind gusts 37, and month to date precipitation 0.04 inches, and, or yeah. Four one hundredths of an inch or 41 thousandths, however you want to look at that. Eight inch soils, temperature 73 degrees. Hey, just to throw this out there at you, this is probably good for all counties. If you're wanting to sign up for equip programs, 
I'm sure the deadline is like tomorrow or November 1st. So at least call. Don't rush in there and tell them Jimmy sent me because then they'll be really mad at me. So, And I've already got some other people mad at me this week. So anyway, but not Brandon. <laughs> What's up, <Not> Brandon? <laughs> not Brandon, but I did have somebody you know she was pretty upset with me Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Can't <Woo>! imagine. <laughs> oh, wait till you hear this story. But anyway, well, how's things going with you? It is. What is up is the wind. It is blowing like crazy. Uh, I sure hope it's blowing us up a big old nice rain. Man, they they keep talking about it. I I, ple- I just pray that uh, they are correct. I mean, I think we're going to miss it tomorrow night, but starting Friday, Saturday, I mean. Actually, starting Saturday for the next seven days, they got a pretty decent chance of rain every day for all of us out here. So, I just hope they're right. I do too. I do. We, we sure we sure need it. It's sure sure past time. Yeah, I mean, the good thing about it is the the first basically the first of November, but our ground mm. temperature is still warm, and with some yeah. good rain, that that wheat and rye and pewter cow, whatever else, will actually grow a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's just amazing to me how how warm we've stayed. You know, we've really had one little old cold snap there for three or four days, but we've been very, very unseasonably warm. Uh, and and you're exactly right. If we get get something for that stuff that we drink, that that uh, wheat is uh, that wheat triticale rye. It'll it'll go ahead and try to come on and grow. What uh, are you seeing any discontent at the sale barns uh, with? Uh some cattle because of the, the our dry weather and nobody's got any forage going on. Oh yeah, yeah. There, there, we've there's been a lot of uh, uh, cows show up that uh, I don't think guys had any intention of selling them. Uh, you know, they're out of water. Uh, you know, a lot of them uh, out of tank water, out of pond water. And, you know, and we've, we've even had a, a couple of guys show up. You know, from down south, a little further south, and and. Uh, uh, west of where you live, you know, saying they're, they've, they've even had some wells go dry that they, you know they can't even get any water out of the out right. of the ground for the cattle anymore. So they're you know being forced into to selling off, and you know, and it's made for some really nice consignment, some really good opportunities to buy some buy some really nice cows because they haven't all been you know middle aged and old. We've had some young cows uh, come in and and made for some good opportunities to buy some, but uh, right. it sure has been. Uh, yeah, it's just gotten awfully dry. Yeah. So what happened in Elk City Friday? Looks like what you have two. Yeah, pretty good size sale. Two thousand three hundred forty-five head. Yep. Yeah. Nice sale. Nice run. Lots of nice quality. Good strings of calves. Uh, again, a uh, heck of a spread between a steer and a heifer. Uh, lots of lots of northern buyer activity on those uh, steer calves and and keeping that thing sure enough up there. You know, and, and what we're seeing right now is is a uh, a larger than normal steer to heifer spread, and also a larger than normal uh, steer to cutter bull spread. I mean, ordinarily in western Oklahoma, we won't see the the great big uh, cutter bull spreads. You know, a lot of these guys don't take a great big discount for not cutting their their bulls. But uh, this year, it's and mostly due to the dry weather. I think it's uh, it's a different uh, different situation we're in, and and uh, you know we're seeing some some thirty forty dollar a hundred. Uh, uh, price differences, you know, from these uh, uh, five and six weight bulls and bulls to steers. Yeah, I said uh, yesterday. I just kind of briefly read off some uh, uh, sale barn reports from Oklahoma and Texas from the USDA report, and uh, I, I I brought that to attention that man, when you get up there and those five, six, and even the seven weights is even more. There's thirty, forty, fifty, sixty dollars per hundred weight difference. That's a, quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It 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 sure is, and that, you know, and that and that's due to the dry weather and the fact that so many of these calves are going north, and and you know they they're not uh, used to dealing with those cutter bulls. Uh, the further north you get, the less of them they see, and so the, you know they're going to spend the extra money and and buy the steers and not have to worry about uh, castrating and things. So. Well, this Friday, one thirty, I guess you, surely we're going to be loaded full of. Uh... Uh, good buyers there for your special wing calf sale. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had several calls already. We're 
We're up to uh, right at 600 on the consignment list for the wean sale. As of right now, we'll, we'll pick up some more between now and sale time. You'll probably end up with somewhere between eight and 1,200 uh, for the special wean part of the sale. And, and uh, it, uh, it looks to be a good one. Uh, lots, of, uh, uh, lots of five and six, seven weight cattle. Uh, few fours, few eights. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, sure. A lot of them five to seven weeks. Yep. I'll be somewhere in there. I'm going to guess mine at seven, mm-hmm. but they'll probably be six and a quarter. <laughs> 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 Cause my landlord that I take care of those cattle out there that I've been weaning them for, I told her, I said, yeah, this would be good. You know, I'm figured seven, seven fifty, and she said, "Well, last year you'd guessed that, and they were six, six fifty. So anyway, uh-huh. we're going to see how good I am this year." Uh huh. Well, it's always hardest to tell on your own. That's no doubt about uh-huh. that. The ones you see every day, uh, you, you go out and see somebody else's and tell them within fifteen or twenty pounds of what they weigh, and and you, you look at uh, look at your own every day, and you can't tell within a hundred pounds. <laughs> oh, I know, and, and but you know you. It's just like me. I thought my peanut crop was going to make seven thousand. It didn't quite get there. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> and you can count them in the trailer. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, cause, hey, but I'm still the goober king. I'm not the peanut nah, that's king. That's what I was saying. Man, no, nobody, nobody stepped into that role that day. You're still, you're still the man. <laughs> what? Well, uh, what about the uh, slaughter market? Oh, uh, we. Mostly steady. There's the, some of the high yielders up just a little. A uh, little bit of the the thin cows maybe up just a little. And a little few uh, feeding cow buyers back in the market uh, this week for the first time, and and uh, that kind of helped the, uh, the the thinner cows a little bit. Uh, the you know the uh, the high yielding cows was up just a smidgen. Nothing nothing great big, but up just a smidgen. A little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, extra uh, uh, competition there. Uh, on both uh, uh, classes of cows, both the thins and the and the and the good, bless your high yielder type of cows, and and uh, so it was it was just just as, I would just call it a smidgen up at both barns this week from from what it was the previous week. Right, and which is which is good, I guess, if people are having to get rid of some of their cattle. You know, this is uh, a good price. I mean, it I'm, is. You know, I, that that that's that's another thing. It's just just absolutely amazing to me. You know the. The kind of drought we're in, and you know, and historically, this kind of drought and cow liquidation and everything, you know, you'd, you'd be having to everybody be having to take 30, 40 cents a pound for them cows, and and uh, and we're you know we're getting up there in the, in the dollar to to, to dollar thirty range, so that's uh, uh, that's pretty phenomenal to be to be able to do that. I mean, nobody nobody wants to have to get rid of their factories, but if they have to, this is a you know this this is a pretty good market to be having to sell them into. Yeah, you know, I. I don't know what I'd do. Uh, you know, I guess if you had some pretty good genetics and you didn't want to get rid of them, and, and you know, farmers and ranchers are pretty well known for having uh, pretty a lot of pride <laughs> in themselves mm-hmm. and with their cattle. And sometimes mm-hmm. a guy might keep them a little longer than he needs to. But <laughs> beside the point, you know, if you got some good genetics and it's going to get you a water trailer and haul to the water. Well, yeah, you know, I visited with a guy this morning and, and uh, or actually it was yesterday evening, and he he brought a cow in and, uh, to to Western Oklahoma livestock, and, and he said, you know, he said I kept her, I kept her a year longer than I should have. But Dad Gummit, but she just had a calf every ten months of the day I've owned her. I just thought it well, she just keep right on doing it. And he said, the next thing I know, I look up and oh my gosh, she looks really bad. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, man, it's just it, it's tough. It's, yep. it, it's it's really tough. Well, let's travel down I forty a few miles and head on over to Western Oklahoma. Uh, how was things yesterday? What was it? One thousand six thirty five? Did I see that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Six seventy five. Sixteen seventy five. Yes, sir. Nice, nice run. Uh, lots of good quality calves again, uh, and some real nice strings of yearlings again. Uh, again, just just floored me at what some of those feedlot ready cattle uh were bringing yesterday i mean there's there's not a lot of them to be had but man oh man when you when you run some numbers in front of them front of them buyers i mean boy they sure they're sure after them and and that's uh that's really really good to see some of these guys that's got these yearlings turned out on grass or on feed or whatnot i mean they're they're getting their 
reap some benefits and uh, getting to reap some really good prices on them feedlot ready cattle and and uh, then the, the calf deal again uh, you know the, the the higher quality uh, you know worked and vaccinated calves you're sure, sure getting a premium right now over the uh, the <clears throat> one step back or the calves that's, that's you know hasn't been had a working or anything the cutter bulls and this that and the other uh, the the multicolored calves I mean we're seeing some pretty big differences in in price right now on those and 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 again that's 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 a lot to do with the uh, northern influence that's that's in our markets right now that you know they're wanting them high quality black calves and preferably ones that's been worked and and uh, you know had a vaccination program behind them and you know they're giving the, you know they're stepping up and buying those calves and 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 giving a pretty good price for them but but the, you know the the bad thing about it is they won't even hardly take a second look at a set that's not had a round of shots or that's that's multicolored and you know and that's that's different than what we're used to here in western Oklahoma we, you know we typically in this time of year uh you know we can sell uh everything pretty good because uh you know at least somebody's got uh, a certain amount of wheat grazing that they're ready to turn something out on and that's sure not the case this year to this point anyway right yeah because i was i was sitting here looking uh you had some 28 head of steers from elk city that weighed 619 that brought 278 that's pretty mm-hmm. salty that's yeah, gotta, that, yeah. I, I'm, I hope I'm doing my math right in my head, but that's got to be pretty close to 1,800 if I'm guessing right. Yeah, yeah that's, a, you know, a good good program. The guy done a good job cleaning. They's all black and black baldies, and, and uh, you know, they was, uh, uh, that's what them guys are wanting. Uh, them weaned steer calves, and, uh, you know, he was, uh, I think he was very, very happy with what those cattle did, but, I mean, he'd worked hard to, to, to put a put a nice weaning on them and put the get them get them worked and put a put a good vaccination program into them and and uh, you know this is one of those times that uh, he sure got to reap the rewards for that. Well, I have a gut feeling. It's just a personal gut feeling, not a professional gut feeling. But that uh, this Friday and next Monday at the auction barns, with all this rain coming in, the market's going to get stronger. I, I would think you would probably be right. Uh, you know, typically uh, it'll it, it takes a week or two after a rain for the for the the big uh, upswing to really hit. But I, I would say you're probably definitely right. We're gonna we're gonna have a little bit more local competition uh, over the next week, and then and then as we go further into November, uh, if we do get a good rain, and that's still a big if. I mean, what you know. Hey, to don't want to go to counting the chickens before they hatch, but it, you know we could see this thing get get. It's it's been good. We could see it get really really wild. I think if this if we could start getting some rain and and maybe some guys getting a little bit more comfortable about some heifer retention and and this that and the other, it could get uh, it could get darn sure pretty uh, pretty wild. I think. Well, I'm keeping the heifers out of this group uh, of calves that I'm bringing the steers in Friday. So uh, I'm going to get it started for you. I'm going to get it started for everybody that, hey, it's time to get those heifers back. And, yep. and then yep. uh, get them on some good feed this uh, winter and then breed them next March or April, next April or May. And mm-hmm. then the mm-hmm. following winter when it's 10 inches snow and 30 below, you're pulling calves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do this. <laughs> Boy, you just talked everybody right into that, right back out of that in a hurry. <laughs> so, well, I got to tell you my K story. Oh, All right. Dude, she is hot. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, we uh, I was on my best behavior, and at the end of the service, uh, we took a special off- offering for because uh, our preacher and the farmer and uh oil field worker and a truck driver all headed to North Carolina yesterday in relief for the hurricane victims. Uh Uh And anyway, the preacher asked me to come down with the guys that were driving out there yesterday because I've been helping them and stuff. He said, let's come down here and you guys, you know, wrap your arms around each other and let's say a prayer. Well, on my way by, I swore, even as hard hearing as I am, I heard Kay snicker. (laughs) 
So while the whole church was paying attention, I turned, I did a 180 before I got down there to the front and just went over and gave her a big old smooch. And then I went back down there for the prayer, hoping for <laughs> to relieve me of my sins. <laughs> But I'm telling you, she was not happy. She couldn't say what she wanted to in front of the church congregation. <laughs> yep. yep. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I, I have this, I have this uh, feeling that some of these days she's going to get even with you. <laughs> I don't know what she'll do, but I have this feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, she was. Usually she smiled and laughed at me this time because everybody was watching. It was whole different ball game. <laughs> so anyway, maybe I should take her out there to help me work cattle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might ought to take her somewhere and make up, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so uh, besides the wing, ca- <laughs> the wing calf sale uh, at one thirty Friday, is that right, one mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. uh, yep. what What's going on at Elk City? And I know maybe it's smidgen early to talk about Western Oklahoma yet, but what you got going? We got several uh, other strings of calves coming besides the weaned ones. Like I say, we've got 600 weaned ones consigned as of right now. I've got two about 40 head sets of cows that I know of coming in so far. Uh, there be could be a few young cows on them. They'll be mostly middle aged to, to older, but there will be uh, a few young cows again. Somebody just kind of kind of cleaning up some pastures where they're <clears throat> running out of grass and running out of water. Uh, so we'll have a nice run uh, besides just the weaned calves. And then Monday, uh, Western Oklahoma Livestock Auction, I got the, the big Mills Ranch over there at uh, uh, Shamrock. They're going to bring their good uh, black calves in off oh, the cows. Cool. Be That'd probably, be a good one. Uh, yeah, be, there, sh- there should be a couple of hundred of them calves, maybe uh, maybe more, uh, They depending on what they decide to do as far as heifer retention. They could be anywhere from 200 to 280 of them calves. And, and, uh, and then we've got several other... Uh, uh, consignments of calves already lined up for Monday as well. So, uh, so if, if the if the rain and the mud don't get us, we're going to have a big run at both barns. I think we'll have a big run at Elk City, uh, regardless of the rain, just because it is the special wing calf sale week. Uh, but it uh, could slow us down a little bit on Monday if we do have lots of mud around, and I, and I hope we do. So, so uh, we'll we'll have another sale the next Monday. We'll catch them cattle then if we uh, if we don't get them this Monday. But I do have. Uh, Four really nice calf consignments, including the the, the Mills Ranch calves coming in uh, uh, for this week. All right, sounds good. Well, Brandon, thanks a lot, and uh, remember to go vote next Tuesday. Absolutely, everybody, please go vote. Yeah, you bet. please go vote. Anyway, uh, I'll see. Don't, you. don't take anything for granted. <laughs> that, that's exactly right, and I haven't decided if I I got to check my closet. I'll check it tonight when I get home, see if I got a bulletproof Mm -hmm. vest. I might come in Friday, I might not. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, we'll we'll see. Yeah, I I have to come in. We're selling calves. So anyway, I got to come in. Oh, man. I got to to find that vest and my Kevlar helmet, and I'll be there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't think, I, I, I honestly, I don't think that she will probably kill you, Jimmy. She she just she might make you wish you would. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't think you Have you seen that? Have you you know what a woman look is, right? Well I got that <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> and it wasn't my wife giving me that look. <laughs> when when you get there, just do do me one favor. What's that? When, when you get there Friday, put on your order that you would like a small bowl of raw pinto beans and see what she says. <laughs> <laughs> She'll probably give them to me. <laughs> so anyway, 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 uh, I don't. I wish it, I wish she'd tell me in advance what her special is, and then that way, see, I could help her out some more with her sales by advertising it for her, you know uh-huh. free of charge while you and I are talking about it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we. But I don't think she knows what her special is until the day of, and she looks in the uh-huh. refrigerator to see what she has left over. So I don't know. Yep. No, anyways. Yep. No. All right, Brandon, thanks a lot. You bet, Jimmy. See ya. All right. We're going to take a Stockman Veterinarian Clinic break. But before we go to break, remember today's Hay Day Tuesdays. And 
I need to know some things. We got a couple people's already text some in. We got some blue stem and some rye. But anyway, we need to know what you're selling, what type of hay, tested or untested, price per bale or ton, load and availability, your phone number and location of hay. Or if you're wanting to buy some, same thing. Just let me know what you're looking for and uh, where you're at. And also, I got a question for you. And the first correct answer, I'm just going to go with the first correct answer today. So my question for Stockman's Veterinary Clinic Happy Hour Day is, what's the difference between a vet and a veterinarian? And first correct answer, I got a coupon here for free fries, burger, and drink out there west of town at 66 to go. Uh, the coupon, the coupon's good for only dining only. But anyway, uh, free fries, burger, and drink. Text in your name and your answer. What's the difference between a vet and a veterinarian? How about that? Anyway, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Are you often wondering just how much extra nutrition to feed your cattle? Kent Watkins here, owner of SEI Agritech in Elk City. A useful tool to help you know just how much to feed this winter is the Oklahoma Mesonet Cattle Comfort Advisor. A great way to help protect your herd from the brutal winter weather. Let us help you with your winter feed needs. We offer bulk or buy the bag, maxi gain, or range max cattle cubes. That's SEI Agritech on South Randall in Elk City. If you'd like to tackle those home projects yourself, like building a privacy fence or spicing up the place with some landscaping, you'll need the right tools to get the job done fast. Rent what you need from DJ's Rentals and Sales on South Main and Elk City. They have gas-powered post hole diggers for fence building, skid steers for hauling landscape blocks, and excavators for any type of digging that needs to be done. The best thing about DJ's is the free advice. Stop by and talk to him about your next project. Mommy, want to play a game with me and Dad? <coughs> Mommy's not feeling good. <coughs> you need to vaporize that cold. Vaporize? Yeah, with DayQuil VapoCool. It's DayQuil plus a rush of Vicks Vapors. Whoa. Come on, honey. Let's let Mommy rest. You guys are amazing. And so is DayQuil VapoCool. DayQuil VapoCool, the vaporizing daytime coughing, aching, fever, power through your day medicine. And to vaporize sore throat pain, try Vicks VapoCool Drops. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. When you get off work, how do you feel on your drive home? Everybody's glad to head home after 8 or 10 or 12 hours on the job. But do you feel like you and the crew did good work and made things happen and helped move a project forward? Or are you just thankful it's over and you don't want to think about it at all? Nobody should feel that way. At Canyon, you won't. Canyon Oil Field Services is hiring day and night drivers for their Fay, Hinton, and Chickasha locations. And they need mechanics in Elk City and Fay. Excellent pay and full benefits will be yours. Apply at Canyon's Elk City office on Highway 6, a mile and a half south of the golf course. Or go online to canyonoilfield.com. You can even call 729-3297. When your shift is done at Canyon, you'll know you've done good work. And when you go back, you'll do even more. At Canyon Oil Field Services, the key word is service. I think every customer wants to be treated like they're the only customer. They want to be treated with respect. At First National Bank, every customer is important to us. Every customer does matter to us. And we try to treat each customer with respect and humanity. It doesn't matter if you have $2 million or $2, you're treated the same with respect and honesty. I'm Tammy DeGarmo, and I help make the difference at First National Bank and Trust of Elk City and Sayer. Member FDIC. When it comes time to put your hard-earned money toward a new vehicle, count on Lipscomb dealerships to give you a better value and car buying experience with friendly, no-pressure sales and quality service backed by a half-century of experience. Save more in the country at our seven dealerships across Texoma with over 1,000 Chevy, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Ford vehicles, plus KTMs and can always on sale at LipscombDealerships.com. Good people, great deals, family-owned since 1979. 
Jimmy's all wound up and ready to go. Here comes more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. All right. Let's check out some ag weather in northwestern Oklahoma. Pick the big town of Freedom, Oklahoma. It's currently 76. And... Oh, you guys are getting closer with your answer here. Currently 76 degrees, dew point 61, humidity 58. Man, I'm glad that humidity is. They got fire. They had fires yesterday everywhere. Uh, the winds are out of the south at 37 with wind gusts up to 45. Uh, 10 one hundredths of an inch in the last 10 days. Three day average four inch bare soil temperature 64 degrees. Sunset at 643. Breezy in 82, today south wind 32 to 33, sustained with gusts up to 50. Tonight, 66 for low, chance of thunderstorms 50%. Tomorrow, rain showers likely 70% chance, high of 80. South winds changing out of the west, 20 to 23 miles an hour, the wind gusts up to 30. So there you have it. All right, so my question was, is what's the difference between a vet and a veterinarian? So far, let me check, make sure. Uh, oh, finally, somebody got it right. All right, we got us, uh, we got a winner finally. Anyway, uh, the difference is a vet is a veteran, and a veterinarian is an animal doctor. How about that? Pretty simple. I'll put your name on this free coupon for fries and burger and i'll have it up front after my show so anyway i got that speaking of stockman's veterinarian clinic and i know we call them vets you know it's just just like me you know it wears me out having to pronounce stuff <laughs> like agriculture it's easier to say agriculture i mean just stuff like that as we move into the fall it's time to get those cows preg checked and up to date on yearly vaccinations with ever-increasing input costs for feed, hay, and labor, open cows can pay the, cannot pay their way. Culling open cows and cow, uh, cows that calve outside your normal calving window is one of the single most important management practices we can do to increase efficiency and profitability. Also remember that it's never too early to schedule a herd visit to establish a relationship with us and to discuss any herd health issues that you can avoid. Emergencies can be prevented, but many herd health problems are easier to prevent than to treat. Let us work with you to improve your herd health and your bottom line, from vaccinations to prevent disease, testing to ensure efficient use of dewormers, and most importantly, the correct antibiotic selection and dose when an issue does arise. We are here to help you. Call Stockman's at 580-225-0200 for all your animal needs. All right. So, anyway, I'll notify you here in just a second. Okay, we can go ahead and take a quick break, get back on track, and when we come back, I'll have your Hobart Farm and Garden Ag Weather Update. I'll also have your Lipscomb Dealerships grain market update and then we'll go over get your pencil and pen ready for some a day we got a couple today and uh we'll have hopefully hey guys great plains is paying for that segment of my show every tuesday so i want you guys to take advantage of advertising your hay or looking for hay you want to uh, buy some hay for free brought to you by great plains and i know it's not just quite the Hey, buying season, we started a little earlier, but anyway, just think about that. They're paying for it, and uh, it's getting out to a lot of people in western Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle, plus Little Dab of southern Kansas also. Anyway, we'll be right back after this Stockman's Veterinarian Clinic break. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. The, the biggest mistake I've seen when people are purchasing insurance or coming in to visit with us is being underinsured. You know, the state minimum on auto insurance is 25000 50000 
and that's too low. I mean, if you run into somebody's new vehicle and it costs fifty thousand dollars, and you only have twenty five thousand in coverage, that's going to come out of your pocket. So, you know, we try to make sure that our our customers are insured how they need to be to to get the coverage. I mean, if you're going to have insurance, you need to have it for the right reasons, and that's to protect themselves. I mean, that's why they have it. I'm really in the business of protecting the customer. When it comes to protection, it's not a large amount more to go ahead and get the coverage you need. Life insurance and annuity products offered through Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. Property and casualty products are offered through Oklahoma Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance and affiliated companies. Hi, I'm Mickey Lively. I'm an insurance agent with Oklahoma Farm Bureau. My office is located in Greer County. Call me anytime at 580-782-3827. From pump to pivot, Valley Water experts can provide efficient turnkey pumping solutions for large or small operations. From identifying a source to remote management, Valley Water experts have you covered with the most efficient and cost-effective solutions for all your water management challenges. Contact your local Valley dealer, Knudsen Irrigation, 1-800-373-9325 or online at KnudsenIrrigation.com. That's Knudsen Irrigation, 1-800-373-9325 or online at KnudsenIrrigation.com. Do you love the great outdoors? Maybe you enjoy trap shooting or skeet shooting, or maybe getting some target practice in at the firing range is your thing. If you're that person, you love guns. Holbert Farm and Garden has a whole room dedicated to guns, gun safes, ammunition, and more. It's quite impressive. You got to go check it out. They are Western Oklahoma's platinum browning dealer and Glock stocking dealer. They're located at 1030 South Monroe in Hobart, Oklahoma. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Hobart Farm and Garden. It helps to work with someone who's been down the same road you're traveling. Someone who knows what you're up against and what you're going through. When it comes to farmers and ranchers, that's us. That's who we are. Our lenders know ag inside and out because we're producers too. We approach it like a partnership. We want to put ag producers in position to be successful. We're very laid back and easy to deal with. And people seem to like that. We think you'll like it too. I'm Marty Maddox. Great Plains Bank in Elk City is here to lend farmers and ranchers a helping hand member FDIC. Hey farmers and ranchers, it's time to make your life easier with an easy haul hay trailer from Everett's Welding in Visay, Oklahoma. These trailers are designed to haul multiple hay bales as quickly and efficiently as possible, keeping more money in your pocket. It'll pay for itself over time and make your life easier. What a deal! See all they have to offer at everettwelding.com. Be sure and check out their ads in the Penny News. Harvest equipment tires need to hold up to long hours, different soil conditions, and lots of road time. Firestone Harvest tires are built to keep up. They offer better traction, less soil compaction, better fuel use, and they're puncture resistant. Blair Tire and Feed keeps a bunch of Firestone Harvest tires in stock. Their inventory is huge. And when you need infield service, they guarantee to get there. If you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, they'll find you and get you moving again. Blair Tire and Feed at Highway 283 and 19 in Blair, Oklahoma. He loves talking about farming and ranching. Here's more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. All right, welcome back. Read America down here in Greer County. 83 degrees, dew point 60, humidity is 46. The winds are out of south at 23 and wind gusts 40 miles an hour three-day average four inch bare soil temperature 72 degrees sunset at 647 breezy and 86 today chance of thunderstorms 30 percent tonight low of 68 87 for high tomorrow and a 30 percent chance of thunderstorms tomorrow manana all right let's see here let's do the lipscomb market real quick See, all right, here is your grain market update from the Lips brought to you by the Lipscomb dealerships. December corn 414 up three and a quarter, March is 427 up two and a half. Soybeans for November 969 down five, January 982 down four. Soybean mill December 30180 down three. January 30310 down 190. Soybean oil December 4301 up 32. Hard red winter wheat back up. It's back up, but it needs to keep going. December 577 up 15 and a half. And March is 590 up 15. 
Cotton's up a little bit today. December cotton, 70.96, up 60. We're going to check in with some boys next week, see how harvest is going. I know Rhodes, is the cotton king, he's rolling right along with his uh, stripper baler that he's got. And so, anyway, he looks like he's, post I seen yesterday, he looks like he's in pretty decent cotton for this for this year. Anyway, uh, December West Texas Intermediate crude oil is down again today. It's at 67.09, down 29. And natural gas is 226, down a little bit too for November. The NASDAQ and S&P are in the green, and the Dow is in the red. Cattle market is in the red a little bit, but not bad. Live cattle for December 189.12 down 15. February 189.75 down 35. Feeder cattle for November 248.32 down 87. And January's 245.77 down 117. Lean hogs, December 82.87 up 225. So there we have it. All right, let's check out the text line for some hay. I got a few of them. Uh, see what we got here going on here. Uh, got, yeah, where are we at? There we go. All right, we got some blue stem hay, untested, $68 or per round bale, no loading available, and we're in Wheeler, Texas, 806-334-0596. Blue stem hay, 68 bucks a bale. They're round bales, of course. No loading available. 806 334 0594 in Wheeler, Texas. Also, we got some uh, rye hay, really good. It's not tested. Uh, 140 bucks per ton, 1,100 pound bales. Can load. Beckham County, 580 821 4816. 580-821-4816 for some really good rye hay. Also, there's a, a let me, oh, I need to get on my Facebook page. Hang on a second. Let me get on my Facebook page on my phone. Facebook on our uh, radio station deals having a slight little issue right now. Let's see here. Uh, what is, yes, there we go. Uh. Bear with me a second here, people. I'm a little slow. Uh, anyway, I'm not even going to get on there. Anyway, uh, there's a bull running around Oklahoma and parts of Kansas on display, and I wanted to share this with you. Uh, Mike Marlowe from Premium Beef Genetics, LLC. Uh, they've got the Iceman on display at different spots uh, in Oklahoma. Yesterday, they were at Stillwater. Today, they're actually, if you're listening and you can hear me down there, they're, they're at Dustin Glover's in Elgin, Oklahoma, with the display of Iceman. You, you got to get on Facebook and check this guy out. It, he is uh, awesome. Oh, I know what it was. Adam sent me that. So, I'll bear with me a second here. I'm slow, but I'm old. Uh, yeah. Anyway, he sent me this Iceman. It's Mike Lutner. Uh, has got this, is the owner, they're out of Iowa, but anyway, it's, man, the, the Iceman is bad to the bone, I'm just telling you, you guys gotta get it there and check it out, uh, on Facebook, and, uh, anyway, tomorrow, they're gonna be in Washita County at K-Bar Ranch, they're north of Canute, and then Thursday at Mike Mims in Hereford, Texas, and then Friday, Brent, uh, Cromwell, at Abbott, Texas, and then Saturday at Burt Burnett, Texas, at Mark Copas's. So, anyway, the uh, Iceman is, uh, he's got to gotta check him out, all right? That's all I got to say. If you guys are looking for some more uh, uh, towards uh, show cattle, towards uh, show calves, this is, this is, uh, is going to be the up-and-coming bull that you guys want to get some semen out of and right now the semen's not too bad at fifty dollars a unit so there you have it 
All right, uh, let's make sure I didn't miss anybody. I did miss somebody on text line last week. Okay, so I think that's everybody. Anyway, anybody curious that hay out there on the trailer at uh, Elk City Livestock Auction under the red tarp, it is not for sale. <laughs> Somebody text me in on that. And it looks like uh, the markets, real quick, i got a minute left here. Uh, the hay market, according to the USDA, uh, Kansas, 160 to 265. That's a big deal on premium alfalfa. Oklahoma's 150 to 230. Texas 240 delivered to 360 on premium alfalfa. A real quick like on other hay, which is basically grass. Oklahoma, nothing available. Texas is 220 to 240 a ton. And Kansas is 175 to 180 a ton. Thanks, everybody, for listening today. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.